When we think of young people, we think of possibility. We see young kids and we hope that they'll be the ones to save our world. And children, they believe they can do it. They want to be superheroes. They want to be doctors, they want to be teachers, cops, firefighters, you name it. However, it seems that as they age, they lose this spark and this motivation to make the world a better place. And I don't think this is a flaw of the younger generations. I, I think instead it's a sense of learned helplessness and the thoughts that we cannot make an impact on the lives of others. I mean, we've all been there, right? Looking ourselves in the mirror and wondering if this is it. Is this all there is to our time on Earth? Is there more that we're supposed to do? Most of us have this inherent desire to help others. It's hardwired in our brains, and it is what has allowed humanity to survive and prosper. However, nowadays, with all the information that is bombarding our brains, more than ever before, we've become frozen. And I think this has led us to believe that we can't actually make a difference in the lives of others or in the causes dear to our hearts. But the truth is, I think this is a false narrative that we've been selling ourselves and selling others. I'd argue that the way to overcome this false narrative is through self-advocacy and understanding that we truly can have an impact on the lives of others. In the summer of 2018, one of my friends was sexually assaulted. When she told me this, I was shocked and I was angry. I was angry with the perpetrator who had assaulted my friend. I was angry with the system failures that had resulted in her not reporting her assault. And I was angry with the lack of supports that were put in place to prevent these types of assaults from happening in the first place. At this time, talk about sexual assault prevention was commonplace. And this was largely due to the Me Too movement. However, with the assault of my friend fresh in my mind, I felt that there was a lot of talk and little to no action. And this resulted in me taking things into my own hands. After all, if not me, then who? I was 18 at the time and I had just graduated high school and I was about to start my freshman year of college. At the same time, I was developing a program that I wanted to use to help decrease the rates of sexual assault in the state of South Dakota. I decided that this program would be hands-on and self-defense based. I had this idea based off of what my friend had told me, that she wished she would have known how to fight back. Because she, like many of us, had been told, if you're ever attacked, you should hit, kick, and scream. This is great in theory, but the fact is, is when we're in a dangerous situation, it's often not enough. And so I wanted to bring evidence-based self-defense skills to youth and to schools at no cost. I wanted students to understand how they can react in a dangerous situation. The fact is, we can fight, there's flight and there's freeze. And I wanted them to understand as well that even if they practice these self-defense skills regularly, they could still freeze, and that's okay. It's not your fault. We can't control the way our bodies are going to react in a dangerous situation. And I wanted youth to understand that if they were a victim of sexual assault, that that is never their fault. Furthermore, I wanted to arm students with the knowledge on how to support their loved ones who had been victims of sexual assault, how to report assaults, and so on. And so I spent countless hours of my freshman year researching evidence-based self-defense skills that I could use for my target audience and how to support survivors of sexual assault as well as different resources that were available to them. Now, I had a lot of support behind me, but I also had a lot of people doubt me. I had people tell me that schools would never take the program, that I wouldn't make a difference, and neither would my program. However, I strongly disagreed. And I had the research, the knowledge, and the drive behind me to keep going. I knew that my program would help somebody, and if it helped even just one person, then all of my work was worth it. And this idea was further driven into me when I had brought this program to some schools and I gave a survey out to the students. And the survey was to rate the effectiveness of my program. One female student anonymously wrote the following, I'm regularly sexually abused at home, and I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't know how to fight back, and you gave me a chance. By the time 2019 came around, I was applying for my first grant. I ended up getting this grant, and as a result, I was able to bring my program to hundreds of students across the state of South Dakota. At this point, I was energized and I was empowered. And so I started going to conferences and presenting my work. I was even able to present at the American Public Health Association's National Conference in 2020. I was 20 years old at the time. By the time the spring of 2021 came across, I had graduated from college with my bachelor's in psychology and I had received numerous awards for my program. 
Next, I enrolled into graduate school where I am currently pursuing my Master of Social Work. As part of that program, we had to have an internship for our first year. So I applied at my local domestic abuse shelter because I thought this was a perfect time to apply my years of research and knowledge and put it into action as an advocate. While I worked there, I had provided direct services to victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, and human trafficking. My experience at the shelter gave me immeasurable insight into the world of violence and violence prevention. And so that also led me to take on a second job, this time as a correctional officer at the county jail. I ended up getting hired for this job in the fall of 2021, and I'll admit it was a job I had never imagined taking on. However, I was quick to realize that treating people who are incarcerated as humans rather than criminals and numbers had a rehabilitative effect. I also was quick to realize that these individuals struggled to cope with what they had endured throughout life, and that's largely one of the reasons why they were inflicting violence on themselves and others. They were inflicting violence on themselves through the poison of drugs and alcohol, and they were taking their pain out on those around them as well. Now, this it does not avoid them of accountability. In fact, it just helps us understand how they got to this point. The fact is, violence is a choice. The violence against ourselves and the violence against others. People who are struggling to cope with things don't get a free pass merely because they're struggling to cope with the difficult things that they have encountered. However, this can help us understand their journeys, it can help us understand the coping skills that they do or do not possess, and then that can help us rehabilitate people and learn where to go from there. So, I realized that empathy and accountability can coexist. And with this realization, I decided, while under supervision, to create the jail's first in-house mental health program. And this consists of individual and group therapy as well as crisis work. Since the creation of the program, we've seen a drastic decrease in crises in the facility, and we have consistently had over a third of the inmate population enrolled in services. I've had lots of clients come up to me and tell me how this has impacted their life and how they had now had the skills to overcome the things that they were struggling with. One example of this is I had put on a cognitive behavioral therapy group with a group of female inmates, and after the group, I asked them for feedback. I said, you know, what did you think of the group? Uh, you've been going for a few weeks. What do you think of the skills? Do you think this is applicable to you? Do you think it's helpful? So on and so forth. As soon as I was done asking, every single member of the group burst into tears. They told me how this group had given them hope and how it had allowed them to learn how to actually deal with the stressors they were encountering in life. One inmate told me, she said, I was never taught how to deal with the stressful things that happened to me in life. And so I was using drugs for that, and I was using drugs to cope with that stress, and I was using drugs to numb the emotional pain that I was feeling. But now, since I've been going to your group, I feel confident in going out into the world, and I feel confident in encountering the stressors that I've been dealing with. And I've been practicing those skills in the facility, and, and I had seen that as a correctional officer. I had seen that she was happier, and she told me, she's like, even though I'm in jail, I'm finally at peace with myself. The truth is, none of this was easy. With each step through my journey in violence prevention, I was met with pushbacks, and I was met with doubts. Sometimes this pushback came from other people, and sometimes it came from myself. After all, how much good can one person really do? How much of an impact can a young 20-something really have on people's lives? More than you'd think. If I'd ask you to think about an accomplished individual, somebody who has had an impact on people's lives, how old are they? In their 40s, their 50s, maybe even older? We tend to associate age with accomplishments and ability. And that's why people in their 30s and 40s panic and ask themselves what they're doing with their lives. And that's why people who are teenagers and have big goals, they say, I can't do it, I'm too young. But the truth is, age is not reflective of accomplishments or ability. What is, is your belief in yourself, your belief in your ideas, and your drive to continue. That is what drives accomplishment, and that is what drives ability. Don't be afraid to take that crazy idea of yours and run with it. Don't be afraid to believe in yourself. Don't be afraid to continue on in the face of adversity. 
because the truth is I'm not going to tell you to save the world. We can't save the world. However, we can change the world for one person, and that is an impact to be proud of. So go for your goals, because the only thing that's really in your way is the limits that you put on yourself. Thank you.